So uh, this was sort of a side project I worked on a little bit. Um, Dakota is design analysis kit for optimization and terror scale applications. So it's optimization software, but it has a lot more to it than that. And I was really interested in uncertainty quantification and uh, this parameter estimate, estimization and uh, optimization too. In our lab, uh, a lot of the guys use ANSYS Fluent and we had a master's student a number of years ago write a single objective uh, genetic algorithm to hook with that. It was in Java and I don't care for Java personally. And I can only do that one specific thing. So I went searching for something that could do multi-objective and do these other things like uncertainty quantification. So I found Dakota and it's uh, maintained by Sandia National Labs. So I'll give a, 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 a few small cases. I've just started messing with it pretty recently, so I don't have anything exciting to show. But Dakota was made to hook with any external program. Um, if you have a black box, Dakota can hook with it, basically. And thankfully, they put up tons of tutorials and examples on using how or different methods of connecting to your black box. So if you want to use MATLAB or Python, they give examples. And it's actually pretty easy to get something at least from it. So, for argument's sake, say you programmed your own SA, no FP2 turbulence model, um, and it doesn't match experimental data. So the parameter responsible for the skin friction coefficient is the CV1 parameter. And we need to calibrate it to match this experimental data. So we can use the coefficient calibration aspect of Dakota to accomplish this. So the way Dakota works is based on uh, what type of problem you're solving, it will generate this params in file. So if you're doing genetic algorithm or a joint based or coefficient calibration, it generates some uh, file to be inputted into your black box. Um, it's packaged with this D prepro and what this uh, function does is it converts the params in file into uh, into whatever file you need for your program to actually to, to actually be able to use that information. So since we're calibrating CV1, that variable is in the RES properties file of OpenFOAM. So D prepro will modify that file. Then we can run OpenFOAM. Um, OpenFOAM will generate the wall shear stress. I have a Python script that changes or converts wall shear stress into the skin friction coefficient and pushes that into a results out file, which Dakota looks for, reads in, and then the process continues. So what a, uh, a Dakota case looks like. So this is a least squared coefficient calibration case. Uh, there's two folders here. Case space has all the open foam case files and set up like the previous file. So time zero, uh, the mesh information, discretization schemes is all there. Template directory uh, has a dummy file that, so in our case it will be the RES properties file, and that is what DPRE Pro will, will, will use that template um, uh, to modify uh, to modify that template file to be used Dakota cleanup is just after you, if you want to reset your case. Uh, this is the actual input file for Dakota, and this simulator script is actually what controls the running of these three functions. So the simulator script um, is what uh, controls the order of running uh, this deep, deep repro open phone and my Python script. So what does the input file of Dakota look like? It's not, uh, it's not too complicated really. They break down the input into different blocks and each block is responsible for a different portion of the uh, initialization. So the method block, we're maximizing the number of iterations to 100 because we don't want it to run forever. 
setting our convergence criteria to one to or ten to the negative eight. And the type of solution we're doing is a uh, least squares solution. The variables we have one design variable, a continuous design variable. I'm bounding it from six to nine, and my initial starting guess is seven point zero. interface uh, tells what files the code is looking for and what files the code is going to create and uh, where what's controlling the, the outside of the code uh, functionality. So uh, in, in synchronous here uh, allows it to run in parallel which there's a whole chapter on optimizing your parallel optimization procedure in the Dakota manual. Our driver script is the simulator script. What Dakota creates is the params in. What it reads is results out. Um, this is like saving the uh, each iteration. I save that folder. And I'm calibrating against nine experimental points on that CF graph. Uh, numerical gradients, that means uh, Dakota will compute the numerical gradients. I could. I could make my Python script compute the gradients myself if I wanted to, and then have that be read in by Dakota, but I'll let Dakota handle that. So the only file for modifying an open phone is this RES properties. So we, so we went through and we told open phone to import our library. We set it to use this turbulence model, and this is the coefficient we want to overwrite when the uh, when the solver runs. So instead of uh, whatever is hard coded in, we'll read in this value x1, and x1 matches our, our uh, design variable. So the DeepRead Pro will make a copy of this file. This is our template file, and it will go through, remove the x1 here, and input the actual numerical value for x1 from Dakota. Uh, this is what the open foam uh, case initially looks like. So I have my boundary conditions. I'm starting from iteration 1000 to save some computation time. There's my mesh. Weigart, here's the experimental data that I'm comparing to. And, see, and this is my Python file to generate the skin friction coefficient. The simulator script is what's going to control those three aspects of the DPRE Pro, Open Foam, and then Python. So first, it, it copies the template um, and inserts the, the actual X1 value. Then Open Foam will run, so I'm running Simple Foam, computing wall shear stress, um, and sampling to get the wall shear stress into a file that my Python uh, uh, script can then read convert to skin friction coefficient and output into a results file that will go back to Dakota. Uh, so this is, so there's nine of the, so this measures residuals for nine of the experimental data points and then the convergence of the X1 design variable. And since my initial guess was pretty good, it converged very fast and the value it converts to 7.093 agrees you know, excellently with the, the, the reference value 7.1, which is which then, uh, you know, it's actually used. So I've already calibrated it, calibrated it right the first time. So the second uh, problem, I want to do an optimization case. It's a little bit different than coefficient calibration where I know what, I, what my design variable or what, what I'm designing to. Instead I just I picked one of the tutorial files that comes with open foam. Um, there's a velocity inlet here and it creates a separation region. And I decided I just picked a point, I want to maximize pressure at this point with and I'm bounding my velocity at the inlet from five to fifteen meters per second. Just as just to try it. So I'll use a genetic algorithm. Um, and the, 
purpose of a genetic algorithm is to imitate natural selection. So I'll have some, a few, uh, I'll have a, a generation of individuals. Uh, these individuals, so these values will be, these values of U will be evaluated and the pressure will be determined. The best uh, two become parents for the next generation. There's breeding and crossover between the other individuals and then some random mutations. And this loop continues until some convergence uh, criteria is set. Um, so we're selecting, it's the same sort of block method. Really, the only thing that changes is the method block. So we use this uh, single objective genetic algorithm. Um, the population size, 20. I should have the, there's some number of generations, 100. So I'll have 100 generations of 20 each. And then there's a few crossover coefficients, number of parents, stuff like that. I just used uh, default values. Um, again, I have one design variable, x1. I'm bounding it from 5 to 15 with my initial guess at 10. Um, parallel again, and I'm using the same, uh, at least the same title for my simulator script terms in and results out. And the, so no gradients are calculated and that's one of the benefits of a genetic algorithm. Um, it's supposed to increase uh, computation, or decrease computation time compared to some gradient based uh, methods. So our, since I'm modifying velocity, the template I'm using is a velocity template. And here's where my x1 variable appears. So deep free pro will replace this with the necessary velocity for each individual for each generation. Um, my script file, so it, it replaces x1, then runs open phone, simple phone again, um, probes the pressure at that location, so I get that value, and then it copies that value into the results of that app. And this was my optimized velocity is 15 meters per second. Maybe I should have chose a bigger window. Uh, sort of makes sense. So it, it seems to be working okay. And what I'm trying to do now is uh, incorporate this into the mesh generation aspect of open phone. And first case I want to run is an airfoil. A few other guys in our lab have run airfoil with fluent, so I want to see if I can match the results with open phone. I'll be happy, that's my last slide, I'll be happy to answer any questions.